all right so what we need to start with is obviously the base for the heart shape itself so what we're going to do now is cut a piece of our 1.25 millimeter wire and we are going to find the midpoint and create a bend right in the middle now bear in mind that this is much thicker wire than you, you use the weaving wire your 0.8 or even your one mil will be a little bit more malleable than this so you'll have to apply a little bit of force but um, just take your time and it'll it'll be all right now once you folded the wire kind of lay the two wires parallel on top of each other and press down slightly like so next we're going to separate out the two wires so slightly pull them apart just do that gently you don't really want to put like a right angle in it's so just a very gentle curvature and then we're going to give the bottom a little bit of a of a curve use your bell making pliers like so and pull them apart so just make sure that the wire that's on top comes out towards the right next obviously we need to create the shape at the top you can use if you prefer you can use something round i just do it manually um, and kind of shape the wire i find that easier for me but everybody's different I just find it easier to shape it by hand because I can also control the actual shape. So I'm bending it around. All right, it's a bit of a fiddly job at this stage, but um, we all get used to it if you work with it for a little while. So next, bring in your chain nose pliers and we're creating another bend. So make sure that the wire comes up towards the top. Because we're going to make sure they sit on top of each other again like I did before at the bottom. So bring that in and pinch and then kind of form your heart shape. If it's not perfectly the way you want it right now, that's okay because we can adjust it at a later stage. This is just... To get the basic shape so just bring that round and the wire on the right kind of follows the shape we've just created so just bring that together and then wind everything around so this is the basic shape and you can then adjust the shape so i decided that i actually like the um the heart to go in the other direction And that's it that's the base shape next we need to obviously attach the wires so we're going to do now is take a bit of our 0.4 wire and we are going to attach this to both of those base wires both of our 1.25s just wrapping it around a couple of times and then taking it around each of the wires once so go over then under then wrap it once around the base wire and so forth. This will show you a little bit better. So I'm rotating here. So hopefully to get you a better view of the way I'm weaving. So I'm going around the back. Then around the first wire once. All around both wires. Bring it in between the two wires and then go around the other wire. And just keep doing this. Repeat this process until you have done a good section so this is what it looks like so roughly about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half is enough to keep the wires bound together so trim off your point four because next we're going to create the basket for our round So just use the longer wire that we had previously from the back and we're going to use this to shape again you can use a something round but you don't really have to as i said i, I personally prefer to just use my hands to shape and um, especially as you then go smaller with the curls so just um take your time and it'll look all right this is basically also just for the back so it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect 
so keep winding until you have got a good backing and then we're going to just trim off that bit of wire once we've finished winding so bring in your flush cutters i find that i prefer the heavier gauge flush cutters because they these wires are quite tough and if you use your fine cutters it ruins them so be sure to use a, a pair of cutters that um, you don't mind to get some kinks and dents in it so once you're happy with the way the basket looks we're going to take that little piece of wire that you can see at the front of the heart and we're going to curl that as well you may need to trim it down a little bit to about three centimeters long and this is what it's going to look like once we've curled it uh, we are going to hammer this to give it a little bit more of a fatter appearance you can see here i'm curling this in and this is what um, it looks like so probably about two or three centimeters long uh, before you curl it in next we're going to hammer the heart so for that i'm going to bring in my steel block and i'm going to use a chasing hammer as well just be sure to go to the edge so that you get the wire flat and be very gentle when you hammer you don't really want to mark your wires so just take your time um, and don't use too much force it will also distort the wire if you hammer too hard to get the little curl you can twist it open and obviously elevate your steel block somehow and then hammer it on top now there's different types of hammers that you can use that won't mark your wires these are sort of rubber mallets that are quite gentle with the wire so once you flatten it you can actually use the rubber mallet to get the wire flat rather than the chasing hammer because it will stop the marking on the wire all right so once you're happy with that this is what it looks like you can see i haven't gone too heavy on the edges just to give it a little bit of strength and um, a wider appearance next bring in your round cab uh, mine's a beautiful amber cab which i've had for ages i thought it looked nice in this perfect size so shape your little coil around the front of the stone and we are going to now use a bit of 0.4 millimeter wire to weave around it to keep it in place so bring that in and we are going to be attaching our wire to the base just shift it in place and attach your point four somewhere at the back uh, somewhere close to the um the center of the the pendant and just wind it around i've used um so a shorter piece of wire here you need about three or four meters of length depending on how much weaving you want to do i just find it easier to add in wire rather than um you know work with one continuous length just simply because it keeps kinking and is it's hard just hard to weave and it takes so much longer to weave with it rather than you know to add in wire at a later stage so i'm just going to go a couple of times around one of the coil wires that at the back of the gemstone then i'm coming across to the front of the coil and this way i will sort of encase the gemstone i'll go a bit up close just now to show you what i'm doing so you go around up and down a couple of times just to anchor your wires in place and then we'll start a different kind of weave which i will show you in a second so just attach so here we go so i am going around five times or six times around the backing coil like so just to create a bit of spacing between because we don't need to crisscross back and forth quite so much um so if we add in a few coils this will get, give us a bit of spacing next i'm going to go back to the front of the stone make sure i capture that twice and then i'm going to go back to the back of the cabochon and start the process again so five weaves and then you crisscross across the stone um, and this is what it looks like looks quite pretty as well so it doesn't look like a dog's breakfast which sometimes the back of a, of a piece does 
This is what it looks like. Right, next we're going to trim off that 0.4. We don't really need it anymore, so just cut that off. And we're going to bring in our length of our first length of 0 0.8 millimeter wire. And we're going to create the backing with this. So attach it somewhere near the center. So find the midpoint of that and attach it somewhere near the center of the pendant. Um, when you're working with thicker gauges at that length as well, it's always a little bit awkward. So just take your time um, and attach. And if you need to redo, redo. I mean, I still had to redo as well. So it can be quite awkward to work with at this stage. So just pull that tight and then go around it a second time. I use a pair of pliers sometimes to um, to press it down. And you can see how I'm just holding onto the wire on the left here. I just find that easier. You can unkink it afterwards. Um, I just find it gives me a bit more grip when I hold it like that so that I can put more pressure on it. So next we're going to just twirl one section of the point eight around itself and that what that does is basically create a a basket a section where we're going to place our other gemstones later on this is the backing so every so often once i've created a twirl i will come back and reattach the wire to the frame this is just so that it's strong and not flimsy if you don't attach it every now and then it won't it won't be strong so I'm just doing a bit of fast forward here so you don't have to keep watching me doing this. You can see I'm using my tools in between to just strengthen the um, detachment and then I just keep winding until the whole heart is covered. Um, and once you've used that one length of the wire you can then use the other side as well if you have to, if you haven't got enough. There you go, just go and keep attaching it to the frame. And that's it, and that's what it looks like. Obviously you finish up the bottom section as well, I just thought I'd show you. And this is the finished piece. So far, so good. Next we need to bend in those wires so that it creates like a an opening or a gap so that we can lay the stones inside that basket so i'm squishing down on the uh, attachments um putting in a, a sort of 90 degree bend so that the the whole twisted section kind of drops um below the level of the outside wire if that makes sense Next, we're just going to trim off the wires. We don't need them anymore. So kind of make sure that when you're cutting them off, they are in the place where they can't snag once the piece is worn. So once you've done that, bring in the gemstones that you want and kind of arrange them in a position that you like. Um, I've decided to go with two pairs that point towards the bottom of the heart um, and bring in another section of your point eight millimeter wire and attach it somewhere near the bottom next bring in the one pair that you want to attach first and we're just going to lay it in that little cradle the basket that we've created by pushing the wire wires down and i'm just going to use that point eight to wrap around now this is quite a fiddly stage you'll find that before the stones are properly attached um, they tend to be quite flimsy and it's going to be quite difficult to, to kind of attach. So just keep keep trying and keep redoing it. If it kind of slips out, you'll, you'll see just now the stone besides it doesn't want to stay in place and it falls out. So um, this is just a fiddly stage, no matter how you look at it. So just keep keep putting the stone back in until you're satisfied with the way it looks. Um, and then just attach the wires as you go along. It's quite important to anchor the wires sort of underneath the stone, around the stone, to make sure it hugs the stone properly. So just go in, and as I said earlier, when the wires are quite long like that, they can be quite awkward. Sorry, I'm going out of shot here. Kind of focusing on getting that wire through. So just... 
feed that through and pull it up and just repeat that a couple of times until you're happy that the stone is anchored go around the stone each time at anchoring it below or or beside it and i've gone around it once or twice now and it's sort of secure still obviously needs more work uh, and now i'm just going to do a couple of decorative swirls so i'm taking the same wire and i'm just going to go around the bottom and these are decorative but will also help strengthen the um the attachment of the stone to the frame right so i've done both stones now and then um, this is what it looks like and all the stones are anchored to the frame quite securely so just make sure that you've done that so next step is to start with the um twirls over the top so bring in another section of your 0.8 millimeter wire this is going to need to be quite long depending on how many swirls you are creating so i've attached it and then shifted it to the left hand side and it's almost going to start from one side to start creating the swirls so put these both together so rather than doing um the one wire like we did at the bottom we are going to use both of them at the same time um to create a sort of thicker overlay that looks much better than the bottom it just looks pretty i think so take both of the wires at the same time and start by very slowly the, the first sort of swirl is always quite difficult i find so just take your time with it um, and just kind of bend the wire around itself this is quite an organic design so just take your time um, and decide where you would like the coil to sit and let your fingers do the work just very gently use a bit of force to pull the weaves in place just make sure that you hold on to both of the wires at the same time you can see here i'm placing my fingers over the wire that will help me to kind of create the shape um, and i just take my time with it um, if you try and rush it it's just going to to be distorted sometimes the wires will, will kind of slip out of place so just bring a pair of pliers to flatten them back down again push it in and as we did with the, the base frame we are going to need to attach these wires to the frame as well periodically to give it a bit more strength otherwise it's just going to be quite floppy so bring it up and as you go along attach it to the frame keep flattening it here with my pliers and decide on a spot where i'd like to attach so bring both of the wires round and again because it's quite a long length um it's going to be unwieldy a little bit but um just take your time and it'll be all right so just feed the wire through and wrap them around the frame Use my pliers to pull them through and when you pull your wires always put your finger or a pair of pliers over so that you don't accidentally pull the coils out of shape so always hold something over them there we go and this is what we're going to do all across the pendant so this is what it looks like so i've covered the whole area around the stone so now what we need to do is as well attach some more wire if you haven't got any left um, and we're going to go around the top right amber stone as well because i thought it looks a little bit bare so i'm just going to repeat the same process it's going to be a little bit more fiddly than the rest because it's at on a thin edge i found that anyway so you might be different and um, i just found it takes a little bit more um more time to complete just because i'm working much slower so you kind of just start and it's a bit flimsy as well because it's attached in an awkward position so just as i said take your time and it'll all fall into place put your finger over it and your thumb and use your hands and fingers to help you achieve the shape um, and also don't forget to attach the twirls to the frame as you go along um, don't be shy to use your pliers if you put any markings in the wire later on you can polish those off easy with a bit of sandpaper or polishing paper so use your tools if you need to 
um, and then just keep wrapping around until you have got enough swirls to cover the outside of the stone as I said keep attaching your wires as well because that will give the whole piece a lot more integrity and it'll definitely be a solid piece and you won't it won't um, the, the twelves won't actually fall apart and just keep twisting until you've reached the other side So once you've finished, we're going to cut off the wires that we don't need anymore. So um, make sure, as I said earlier, to cut them somewhere you can push them in so that they don't snag on any clothing that you're wearing later on. And this is what it looks like so far. So the next step is to add accents. You can use some more of your 0.4 millimeter wire. Um, and then what I've used are some two to five millimeter copper beads. Um, and I've used two of each except for the largest one um, and then just kind of shaped them around the stone and attached them with a piece of wire. Apologies again, I'm going out of shot here. Um, once I have attached them, I'm individually going around the wire and the base frame and attaching the wire in place because it um, that means it just won't it won't break if the pendant gets stuck on something. Um, and then just keep attaching as you move along and that's it so that's the last step and um, we're going to trim off the wires and if you want to you can put this into liver of sulfur which is oxidizing uh, the wire and it makes it look darker so last step is to decide where you want to add your jump ring and that's it and i hope you enjoyed that thank you for watching